so the scenario at the moment is every one of you is a librarian and you want to set up koha in your library and you want to set up it from the scratch because you do not uh, have so much uh, many members or there may, you are a librarian or as well as you are a system administrator and you are going to set up koha for your library and we will try to see how this works okay so uh, all of you have been able to see on your screen uh, the installation of koha which is there now what we are going to do today is we will try to see how acquisition module works how cataloging module works how circulation module work and how patrons module work so there are many other features of koha but uh, in a day we may not be able to complete all that you have and as dr pathak had said you can note down the queries that come across to you so that it is always certainly important that any development which happens in koha uh, there are people who work continuously across the world to develop koha and there are people who have expertise in perl programming language they will try to understand that okay this feature people had difficulty in uh, operating koha so they will try to make some modifications and they will be made available now as i had mentioned in my earlier talk the development of koha started in 1999 2000 and now for last 17 years it has been used across the world by all types of libraries academic library school library college library university library as well as a national library and many countries also have made a mandate that any library wishes to do their computerization they will use koha now i do not claim that it is an 100% perfect software of course any software in the world will have some advantages and disadvantages so there are they while working on this software because i have conducted several training programs i have seen that uh, any new thing which we uh, uh, try to learn we always feel not we do not feel really some people may feel interested but some people think that oh no i like if i buy a new car i will always get scared no i am not able i am not comfortable i find it difficult so that mindset would always be there and we are used to use something earlier which we have been using for the years so we were in a safe zone we are in the safe zone now we want to come to a new zone and then there will certainly be some obstacles while using the software there will be certainly some difficulties while using the software and there will be some clarification that we do not know in earlier software there was some way in this software there will be a some another way so certainly that all is going to be there what you have to do is you have to identify yourself in a particular module which module is really very easy what do you find the strength and weakness so it is also important that we identify the strength and weaknesses it is not that uh, somebody is saying koha koha you should start talking about it it also is very important that what are the functionalities how the software functions how easy it is for even a layman who will start using it even if he or she is not a library science professional how comfortable they are while working on the software technologically user interface which you see on the screen as well as the functionalities so from all these aspects how a user a, 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 a librarian is comfortable while using the software these are some of the important points which you we need to remember now in the last session i had also mentioned that now on all your machines why we have created a separate installation because you remember on the earlier session when we had only one installation there was a mess because everybody tries to create the same library name everybody tries to give the same item type name and it was getting mess but in koha if uh, as i have mentioned a single installation can handle multiple libraries that means you do not really have to install koha on every in every library uh, you can run uh, under one installation there are, i will just try to give you some important features which koha has what the, what will happen is if i have this server with me i can install koha on my one server 
and if there are 10 libraries or 20 libraries or 100 libraries which are under my single in the, uh, funding agency or uh, under academic libraries or public libraries, I can create those libraries under one installation. So I do not have to install Koha on separate machines. That is one of the benefit Koha has. By doing that, what, what happens is, if one book is purchased by A library and similar book is purchased for the B library, the cataloging, classification, uh, ordering, all that data which is entered in once in A library can be used for the B library, similarly for the C library and at the same time you do lot of standardization. So what we achieve is we are achieving lot of standardization. Another good feature of Koha, though good as well as a bad feature I would say, bad in the sense some improvement is required in that feature. Uh, we will be learning that in the acquisition module. Uh, Koha allows to see, show you the budget instantly uh, because you say for example my library budget is 10 lakhs and I uh, allocate 5 lakhs for books and 5 lakhs for journals. And if I actually properly use my acquisition module without making any mistakes, I will be able to instantly see my budgetary status on the fly. I do not have to do any uh, summing up all my invoices separately, all that is not required. Only thing is, uh, the way we are used like Indian environment, uh, like all Slim and Lipsis if you remember, we have the facility to give that uh, original currency and then it gets converted into the rupees and then you can. Koha also has that feature, but everything is calculated on one currency. That is now if I am using in India rupee currency, I can see all the rupee values. But if I, even if the rupee values are there, if I have managed all my invoices properly in Koha, I do not have to maintain any separate budget. I can instantly see my expenditure online without looking at any other papers which are there. That is one of the good feature which Koha has. Another important feature which Koha has is, as I have also last time we have tried to uh, learn that feature, we all are busy in doing the acquisition of the books, cataloging of books and circulation of books, same scenario with the journals management as well. In cataloging, Actually, whenever we catalog a book, we start entering author name, we start entering title, publisher, a name of the publisher, year of publication, all that details we try to enter. Now, with the Koha, you can download cataloging records from Library of Congress, not only from Library of Congress, basically, you can download the records from other libraries who allow you to download the records. So, that is very good part of Koha is then again you do not have to spend your time on cataloging. Only you have to worry about cataloging of local collections which are available in your library. Now I, since in, we are in India, we have lot of local collection in very variety of languages, Hindi, Kannada, Bengali, Urdu, Sanskrit. So all these languages collection if we have, we can catalog those collection in the language they are in so that user can also query a search on the same script. They do not have to do transliteration. Okay? We will also try to enable that feature and see how that works. So now we have to also remember in the libraries, like uh, in my library we have to buy a lot, lot of Hindi books. So now we are cataloging all the Hindi books in Hindi language. We are not transliterating them. Okay? That is very important. So when a user searches for Gandhi, he has to type in the Hindi Gandhi and all the books will be retrieved on Gandhi by Gandhi. So that is very important feature which Koha has. So that feature is called as Unicode support. Okay? That means you can catalog any document which is available and at the same time Koha allow you to catalog any type of material which is available. We are not only talking about books and journals, in our library, we can have manuscripts, we can have CDs, we can have toys, we can have uh, uh, sculpture and monuments, we want to catalog them. So there is a Mark 21 standard which is available for cataloging. What does Mark 21 does is, uh, Mark 21 has 952 tags. 
what does that mean is that means mark mark 21 the full form is machine readable cataloging the full form of mark is machine readable cataloging why it is required if my cataloging record needs to be shared with the other library computer understands the cataloging data so a uh, title author everything is put uh, put up under respective tag okay so why mark 21 has 952 tags because in a library as i have said we do not have only books and journals we may have variety of other documents that we want to add in the library we want to catalog in the library and we want to make them available in koha okay so that is why mark is used so it is a cataloging standard which it uses in koha is mark 21 another feature with koha is uh if i have and all of these items are uh, all of these documents are called as item in koha okay well, like for example uh, i have also given you the example last time but i'll repeat say you have purchased a book written by me introduction to digital libraries so the book uh, ha, uh, the book is in the ebook format book also has a cd rom book also has a dvd and book also has a print copy of the book that means for the same title you have variety of items okay now when you are adding the all that data into koha you do not have to create six entries right ebook is there cd rom is there dvd is there print copy is there and maybe uh, some audio uh, um, tape would be there so there are actually five types of items for my single title of the book i can attach all of them with one bibliographic record that is called as cataloging record so i don't have to create five entries koha allows me to provide at well, along with one bibliographic entry i can attach five items they are called as items in koha okay so that is again one of the good feature which koha has and very important is uh, uh, looking at some uh, advantages disadvantages with acquisition and serial but koha's circulation cataloging and opac is very strong uh, okay and as well as generating the reports we all are doing this for whom we are doing all this work for the users so for the users in opac koha supports tremendous facilities okay now i don't know how many of you if you are part of uh, the group or not if you your library wishes to move to using koha i would request you to join the mailing list which is available for the users so there is a koha users mailing list what that does is every day any library gets into any problem in koha they will try to put up a query and people will answer on those queries okay so for the opac point of view koha has lot of features okay now basically what are those features uh, users can uh, see let me just list out what features have uh, opac okay you can search basic search and advanced search is available then users can suggest books through opac they don't have to come to the library for suggesting the books okay users will be able to receive their check out check in books which they have issued out they can receive the email as well as they can receive the sms instantly for which again they don't have to they can renew books online okay users can renew books online again they do not have to come to the library for and then one more important feature uh, couple of features which are there is uh, if there some books library has purchased and i am a teacher and i want my students that these are 20 books which are used for some course what i will do is i will classify as a teacher those books so that they will be separately classified as per my requirement librarian has given a class number keyword that's a different thing but as a user i have my own way of classifying books which are available in the library koha allows me to do that in my opac okay and then i can search create variety of list online like uh, say for example i am collecting books on say all hindi books which are available i want to know how many hindi books are available in the library if i give a search and restrict on hindi as a language koha will give me all the list i can save that list and send it to somebody else 
So generating list, saving it as a report and sending it to the user, you do not have to depend on the librarian now on Koha. Okay? All that feature is available on your OPAC okay? and you can restrict advanced search is very good, Koha's advanced search is very good feature. Another thing which uh, people can do is, users can write the comment. Say if the librarian has purchased any book and as a user, you did not like the book, I can write a comment as a user. Why has the library purchased this book? Or I can say some comment and or I can initiate a discussion on a book through OPAC. Okay? That means if there are four people who are reading the book and they want to discuss on that topic, Koha's OPAC has the feature of writing comment, generating the reviews, discussions and at the same time, Koha also has RSS feed support. I think I last time mentioned about it, uh, really simple syndication. That RSS feed support is also available in Koha. So on the OPAC page, we will be seeing some of these features. I would also request you, instead of spending more time on how the staff client works, you should see how the OPAC works and uh, as I, uh, there are across the world many installations of Koha you will find some of the libraries initiate all the features which are available in OPAC, some libraries still have not initiated the features which are supported but it has many good features from the user's point of view. Let me tell you RSS uh, example, say for example, you are accessing my library OPAC very often. Okay? Now uh, when you search for uh, digital library, you have got some 10 results today. Now you do not as a librarian, you do not have, uh, as a user, you do not have time to every day go and check on digital library how many books have been purchased. So what I can do is, I can search for digital library, click on RSS feed and I will save on my computer computer will automatically update me when new books on digital libraries are purchased by the library. Okay? So that is one of the feature which Koha has is called as really simple syndication, RSS feed support. That is very important because I may not have time to come to the OPAC, library OPAC every day. I just want to know whenever library purchase books on my subject interest, I should be informed. So that is called as RSS feed support. So there are many, many features which are available on Koha. What we will be doing is for the whole day today, we will try to learn each module. While learning the module, please follow me on the screen what I am trying to give the instructions on your screen and we will see how acquisition works, how cataloging works, how circulation module works, how patrons module work. And I am sure you will get a confidence. Uh, certainly if you are from the library group, then you will not have any difficulty when I am giving instructions on the screen. We will break for 10 minutes for tea and we will come and start our session. Okay? Yeah. Thank you.